Saudi domestic politics and foreign policy-making processes are similar to those of other Middle Eastern monarchies in that they generally comprise tribal, religious, economic, and familial components. Where they differ, and differ from each other, are the specifics of these components, particularly the religious aspect and aspects of political consolidation in Saudi Arabia. The Qur'an serves as the constitution, the Prophet's traditions, Sunnah, remain crucial, and Sharia, or Islamic law, forms the basis for law enforcement. However, across the Arab Gulf states, there is a growing emphasis on economic diversification during the contemporary period of transition from rentier to semi, late, or post-rentier statehood. Muhammad ibn Saud, also known as ibn Saud, the Emir of Diriyah, is recognized as the founder of the first Saudi state and dynasty, reigning from 1727 to 1765. The puritanical principles of Wahhabism were established through his alliance with Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, a religious leader, scholar, and theologian, in 1744, coinciding with the establishment of the Emirate of Diriyah. Although Wahhabism is often labeled as intolerant, scholars like de Longbass argue that it represents a reformist voice, reflecting mainstream 18th century Islamic thought and advocating for a monotheistic Islamic society where Muslims, Christians, and Jews could coexist peacefully and engage in cooperative commercial relations. The followers of the Tawheed doctrine, the Muwahidun, depended on the House of Saud to maintain their religious influence, while the House of Saud relied on Wahhabis for political leadership. As Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab remarked to Muhammad ibn Saud, You are the settlement's chief and wise man. I want you to grant me an oath that you will perform jihad against the unbelievers. In return, you will be imam, leader of the Muslim community, and I will be the leader in religious matters. By the time of Muhammad ibn Saud's death in 1765, most of Najd was under Saudi control. By the death of Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab in 1792, Saudi control had expanded to the Rub al-Khali, empty quarter. Abdul Aziz bin Muhammad al-Saud, Muhammad ibn Saud's eldest son, ruled from 1765 to 1803, followed by Saud bin Abdul Aziz al-Saud from 1803 to 1814. Saud bin Abdul Aziz al-Saud extended control to the Hejaz region in western Saudi Arabia, capturing Taif first, followed by the holy cities of Mecca and Medina, previously under Ottoman rule since 1517. This earned him the title Servant of the Two Holy Cities. The first Saudi state managed the Haji from 1807 to 1812, and in 1807 Ibn Saud opened the Prophet's tomb and seized its treasures, citing a cessation of Ottoman aid to Medina as justification. The Ottoman response to the Saudi expansion was led by Muhammad Ali, the Viceroy of Egypt. His son, Ibrahim Pasha, led Ottoman forces into the Hejaz during the Ottoman Wahhabi War of 1811-1818 and besieged Diriyah throughout the winter of 1818. Abdullah bin Saud, who ruled from 1814, was executed in Constantinople in 1819, marking the end of the first Saudi state. There have been two other Saudi states, Turkey bin Abdullah bin Muhammad's reconquest in 1824 against Egyptian forces marked the beginning of the second Saudi state, covering the region of Nejd, modern-day Riyadh and Ha'il. This state lasted until 1891, when internal conflicts between forces loyal to the last Saudi Imam, Abdul Rahman Ibn Faisal, Ibn Turkey, and the Rashidi dynasty of Ha'il led to its downfall at the Battle of Mulaida. Prior to 1917, the British supported Sharif Abdullah Ibn Hussein of the Hashemite family in Jordan as the leader of the Arab movement and head of the anti-Ottoman Arab revolt. In early 1917, Ibn Saud received a modest monthly subsidy and a role in anti-Ottoman efforts, including harassing Rashidi forces. During 1916 and 1917, Ibn Saud began a state-building campaign in Nejd, contrasting with the small local protégés supported by the British and Ottomans. After a 1920 plot against him by Hussein and the Sheikh of Kuwait, Ibn Saud launched a systematic campaign of conquest. He first defeated the Kuwait contingent and then, with support from the Shamar tribe, laid siege to Ha'il, which collapsed in 1921. 
In July 1924, Ibn Saud reportedly inflicted a massacre on Taif and concluded a treaty with the Idrisi ruler, giving him control over Asir in 1925. After the occupation of the Hejaz and Wahhabi control of the two holy mosques, Saudi sovereignty was endorsed by a Muslim conference convened in Mecca. However, groups like Hejaz al-Hur, Free Hejaz, continued to dispute Al Saud's control over the Hejaz, citing its brief independence under former ruler Ali bin Hussein. Saudi state consolidation has always involved a symbiosis of state and religion, with marriage playing a major role in consolidating control over provinces. Subsidies were paid to tribal leaders, and efforts were made to turn nomads into farmers, religious scholars, and soldiers garrisoned in special settlements. These Ikhwan formed the first Saudi army, but were difficult to control. Disliking central authority, and resenting Ibn Saud's association with infidel foreigners. They also encroached into neighboring provinces and across new territorial boundaries established by the British with Iraq and Transjordan. New ports in Jubail and Katif enhanced Saudi trade, while the 1927 Jeddah Treaty gave the nascent Saudi state, incorporating the Hejaz and Nejd, independence. After the Ikhwan revolt in 1930, which was defeated by government troops and the British in Kuwait, further Saudi institutionalization and centralization occurred. Nonetheless, rebellions were common in Hejaz and Asir due to the economic depression and increased taxes. The early 1934 war with Yemen, which the Saudis quickly won, led to a treaty of friendship reflecting similar agreements with Iraq, 1931 and 1936, and Transjordan, 1933. The founding of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia by Ibn Saud in 1932 occurred amid tensions between Saudi Arabia, Oman, and the Trucial states, now UAE, notably the Buraimi dispute in the 1940s and 1950s. This culminated in the Saudi invasion of the Buraimi oasis, which the British countered by occupying the oasis, leading to clearer demarcation of British and US company operations in the region. The result was a symbiotic relationship between the monarchy and outsourced Islamic jurisprudence, resulting in a generally cautious leadership. A notable exception was in 1958 when King Saud attempted to assassinate Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser, leading to a brief but difficult standoff between the Al Saud family with Wahhabi clergy support and King Saud before power transferred to Crown Prince Faisal. During King Faisal's reign, Saudi Arabia invested heavily in promoting Islam through charitable funds and religious institutions such as the Muslim World League established in 1962 and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, in 1969. The Higher Council of Ulama, HCU, or Council of Senior Scholars, the kingdom's highest religious body, was established in 1971, with the Grand Mufti always a member of the al Sheik family. King Abdullah later worked informally with the HCU to ensure fatwas would not embarrass the kingdom on domestic or foreign issues. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia remains an absolute monarchy and theocracy. The management of Hajj by Saudi Arabia is not only a religious duty, but also crucial for national security and diplomatic relations with Muslim-majority states worldwide. This has been true since the early days when the Syrian caravan carrying the Mahmal, a wooden structure for the Kaaba's covering made in Egypt, was temporarily banned. Apart from being viewed as an innovation in Islam, the caravan was accompanied by armed Ottoman Egyptian soldiers, posing a security threat to Ibn Saud and challenging his authority in the Hejaz. Cairo stopped the Mahmal ceremony in 1953 and ceased sending the Keswa in 1963. Over the years, managing the Hajj and related incidents has led to various tensions, particularly impacting relations with Iran and other regional actors. Religion significantly influences Saudi Arabia, mainly through the king's role as the custodian of the two holy mosques and the sacred territories, which includes overseeing the Hajj and Umrah pilgrimages. Given that Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam, any issues or perceived corruption in its management can severely affect Saudi political legitimacy. Additionally, relatively new Islamic institutions based in the kingdom, like the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, play a role in extending Saudi influence, both indirectly and economically, especially following the advent of the oil era. 
The Shia minority in Saudi Arabia constitutes about 10% of the total population, predominantly residing in the oil-rich eastern province. While they generally have sympathetic ties to Iran and seek reforms within the kingdom, they have been securitized by Saudi authorities in response to the Iranian revolution and the existence of Hezbollah al-Hijaz during the 1980s and 1990s. The interplay of counter-terrorism and sectarianism involves a complex mix of doctrinal, religious, sub-national, local, national, identity, and transnational, international relations and leverage influences. To address sectarian divisions, King Abdullah founded the National Dialogue in August 2003, aimed at tackling social challenges post 9-11, terrorist attacks in the kingdom, and various petitions submitted to the king. The King Abdulaziz Center for National Dialogue continues this work, having held 10 meetings by 2015. Additionally, King Abdullah initiated an interreligious dialogue under the King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz International Center for Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue, though it avoids overt references to Shia Muslims and has mainly conducted meetings outside Saudi Arabia, predominantly in Europe. Efforts to improve the Shia minority's living standards in the eastern province included enhancing their participation in the workforce and lower levels of government administration, such as the municipal council in the Shia-dominated city of Katif. However, these initiatives have not been sustained since the Arab uprisings. Saudi concerns over Iranian subversion in Bahrain, where the population is about 70% Shia, have hindered better relations with the Shia community domestically and with Iran. The execution of Shia cleric and activist Nimra al-Nimra on January 2, 2016, led to a rapid deterioration in Saudi Shia and Saudi Iranian relations. King Salman and Mohammed bin Salman have made several symbolic gestures with religious leaders to promote a new discourse on religious tolerance, essential for stabilizing and liberalizing the kingdom. In 2017, Mohammed bin Salman promised to steer the kingdom towards moderate Islam, distancing from the rigid doctrines attributed as a response to the Iranian revolution. This religious outreach is part of broader efforts to liberalize the Saudi economy and attract global tourists, businesses and investments. Mohammed bin Salman's declaration that Saudi national identity is the umbrella of all Saudis suggests more positive future relations with the Shia community in the eastern province. As part of Vision 2030, al Koba, a city in the eastern province, became the first in the Middle East to receive a 5G wireless network, with the healthcare industry receiving support from external funders like the UAE. Following the Gulf War in 1991, Saudi Arabia underwent a top-down secularization process that advanced state formation, historical commemoration, and capital accumulation while viewing Islamist movements as a major threat. This secularization has influenced city planning, foreign policy, and regional relations. High oil revenues in the 2000s allowed the state to limit clerical budgets, altering the balance of power between the state and religious authorities. Secularization and liberalization, favored by the youth and women, have progressed, exemplified by the replacement of the head of the religious police in 2012 and a new law in 2016 that curbed their authority. Under Mohammed bin Salman, the kingdom has moved towards moderate Islam open to the world and all religions, breaking the long-standing bond with Wahhabi clerics. This shift has seen Saudi Arabia cease funding Islamic groups abroad and give up leases on European mosques. The kingdom's current focus is on competing with other GCC states, such as the UAE, rather than leveraging Wahhabism for political influence. The decision in 2021 to allow Saudi shops to remain open during prayer times symbolizes the kingdom's secular trajectory. The Shia minority in Saudi Arabia, comprising about 10% of the population, mostly resides in the oil-rich eastern province. Historically, this group has had sympathetic ties to Iran and has pursued reforms within the kingdom. However, they have been securitized by the Saudi authorities, particularly after the Iranian revolution, and the emergence of Hezbollah al-Hijaz in the 1980s and 1990s. This securitization reflects a complex mix of counter-terrorism efforts and sectarianism involving doctrinal, sub-national, national and transnational influences. 
Efforts to bridge the sectarian divide included the establishment of the National Dialogue by King Abdullah in August 2003 in response to post-9-11 challenges, terrorist attacks within the kingdom, and various petitions. The King Abdulaziz Center for National Dialogue continues this initiative. Additionally, King Abdullah initiated an interreligious dialogue through the King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz International Center for Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue, though it has generally avoided overt references to Shia Muslims and has held meetings mainly in Europe. King Abdullah also worked to improve living standards for Shia in the eastern province and their participation in the workforce and local government, such as the Municipal Council in Katif. However, these efforts have waned since the Arab uprisings. Concerns about Iranian influence in Bahrain, which has a significant Shia majority, have further complicated relations with the Shia community and Iran. The execution of Shia cleric Nimr al-Nimr in 2016 exacerbated these tensions. Under King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, there have been symbolic gestures promoting religious tolerance. In 2017, Mohammed bin Salman pledged to move the kingdom towards moderate Islam, distancing from the rigid doctrines associated with the Iranian revolution. This shift is part of broader efforts to liberalize the Saudi economy and attract global investment. The Vision 2030 initiative and related projects, such as introducing a 5G network in Alcoba and boosting the healthcare industry with external funding, indicate potential improvements in Shia relations. Post-Gulf War, Saudi Arabia has undergone a top-down secularization process, impacting various sectors and reducing clerical influence, particularly regarding budgets for Wahhabi projects. The replacement of the head of the religious police in 2012 and the 2016 law limiting their authority signaled a shift towards a more open society. Mohammed bin Salman's efforts since 2017 to promote moderate Islam have further diminished the traditional bond with Wahhabi clerics. The kingdom has ceased funding Islamic groups abroad and now focuses on competing with other Gulf Cooperation Council states, such as the UAE. Saudi threat perception has also been influenced by internal criticism. King Faisal allowed the World Association of Muslim Youth to be staffed by many Muslim Brotherhood figures during the 1960s and 1970s. The Sawa movement, a faction of Saudi Qutbism, emerged in 1968 and gained prominence in the 1990s. Extremist attacks by groups like AQAP in the early 2000s and cross-border attacks by ISIS highlighted ongoing security challenges. The 2011 Day of Rage, inspired by the Arab Spring, led to significant financial measures by King Salman to secure the monarchy, underscoring the resistance to becoming a constitutional monarchy. Political activists and movements, such as the Islamic Ummah Party, faced severe repression, with many leaders arrested or pressured into silence. The assassination of Jamal Khashoggi in 2018, linked to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, marked a severe response to internal dissent. Khashoggi's critical writings on Saudi politics and policy, rather than his associations with the MB or Qatar, were likely the primary reasons for his killing. This incident, along with the arrest of activists like Princess Basma and women involved in the Women to Drive campaign, highlights the kingdom's intolerance of internal criticism and calls for reform. The treatment of activists in Saudi Arabia has been a contentious issue, particularly for women advocating for rights and reform. As of May 2020, there were still 48 women activists detained across five prisons. A notable case is Lujen Al-Hathloul, who was first arrested in May 2018 and released following direct criticism from President Biden. Many other activists remain imprisoned or are under close surveillance and subject to regular arrests. Land disputes are a significant source of popular dissent in Saudi Arabia. Mohammed bin Salman, during his youth, earned the nickname Abu Rasasa after allegedly sending a bullet to a land registry official who refused to help him forcibly acquire land. Incidents of local resistance to forced evictions are not uncommon. For example, a local resident was shot dead by security forces in al Quraiba in April 2020 and subsequently labelled a terrorist. Similar displacements are reported in the city of Tabuk, there is also evidence of contention over the Al Saud consolidation in the Hejaz, 
such as renaming areas and hospitals to reflect the patronage of specific princes, which some perceive as undermining the local region's identity and history. Dissatisfaction with the ruling elite appears to be mainly among Salafis, some princes, and the older generation who prefer more cautious policies. Campaigns of political activism by dissidents and secessionists are primarily conducted online and through social media, largely driven by the youth. However, due to state monitoring and societal norms, it is difficult to gauge the full extent of these activities. Technology is an integral part of the authoritarian toolkit in Saudi Arabia, with numerous instances of censorship, phone tracking, and the grooming of informants, lobbyists, or journalists at major media companies. This context casts a different light on the kingdom's opening of a media city in February 2020 to attract foreign media companies. In October 2020, Saudi Arabia's membership in the UN Human Rights Council was rejected on human rights grounds, while China and Russia managed to secure seats. Additionally, there has been an effort by Saudi activists based in the UK, the US and Canada to institutionalize a political opposition and advocate for a transition to democracy, as seen in their actions in September 2020. Overall, these actions reflect the ongoing challenges within Saudi Arabia related to human rights, political dissent, and the kingdom's attempts to manage both internal and external perceptions of its governance and reform efforts. The traditional Saudi succession, which previously moved among the brothers of Ibn Saud, experienced a significant shift in April 2015. King Salman ousted Mukrin bin Abdulaziz, who had served as crown prince for only four months, by royal decree. This move bypassed the Allegiance Council and overturned King Abdullah's previous decree. Prince Nayef bin Abdulaziz Al Saud was appointed crown prince, and Prince Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, became deputy crown prince. This change in succession reinstated the Sudari line and paved the way for Mohammed bin Salman's political consolidation, culminating in his appointment as Crown Prince on June 21, 2017, after ousting Prince Nayef. The rise of Mohammed bin Salman marked the first time one of Ibn Saud's grandsons assumed significant state responsibilities. His ascent was not guaranteed and followed the premature deaths of his brothers, Prince Sultan and Prince Nayef, who were next in line. However, MBS King Salman's favorite son was groomed for leadership, having graduated with a bachelor's degree in law from King Saud University in 2007. Unlike many other Saudi leaders, MBS was not educated in the West, potentially limiting his ability to gauge Western responses to Saudi policies and actions across various domains, including defense, economy, religion, and oil. His inspirations are foreign figures like Alexander the Great and UK Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, known for her economic restructuring. Under Mohammed bin Salman, political consolidation has been a hallmark of Saudi governance. National Day, a public holiday since 2005, has grown in prominence but faced backlash from religious figures who view it as alien to Islamic traditions. The media landscape has increasingly reflected social media content, including nationalist responses and accusations against activist campaigns. MBS has also consolidated control over mega-projects, such as the government takeover of the Saudi Bin Laden Group after a crane accident in 2015, redirecting the company's focus to projects like Neom. MBS's consolidation of power extended to restructuring advisory bodies, merging 12 different councils into more streamlined entities, which many Saudis saw as a way to cut through bureaucratic barriers to progress. Significant social reforms have also marked his tenure, notably allowing women to drive from June 2019 and attend sports matches since January 2018. The appointment of Princess Rima bint Bandar bin Sultan as the first female Saudi ambassador to the US in February 2019 is another notable milestone. These changes reflect a broader agenda to modernize the kingdom and improve its image abroad as evidenced by consultations with U.S. think tanks in February 2016. The move to enhance women's roles in Saudi society began under King Abdullah, who invested in new centers of advanced learning using oil revenues. He promoted Nora bint Abdullah Al-Fayez to Deputy Minister for Education in 2009 and appointed 30 women to the Consultative Shura Council in 2013. 
He also allowed women to vote and run for office in the 2015 municipal elections, with some women winning office, indicating a shift in the domestic political landscape. Grassroots civil society elements, such as the King Salman Center for Local Governance, affiliated with Prince Sultan University, also play a role in this evolving framework. Overall, these shifts in succession, governance and social reforms under Mohammed bin Salman reflect significant changes in Saudi Arabia's political landscape and social structure. The events surrounding the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Riyadh in November 2017 marked a significant moment in Saudi Arabia's anti-corruption efforts. The hotel was used as a detention center in an anti-corruption drive targeting Saudi royal and business elites. The government recouped over $100 billion through various deals with prominent figures like Prince Miteb and Prince Alwaleed bin Talal, among those who made settlements. This episode led some Saudis to explore second nationalities, reflecting concerns about the selective nature of the anti-corruption drive and its potential for score settling. Subsequent actions aimed at recouping funds involved the detention of Mohammed bin Nayef and his brother Nawaf bin Nayef, as well as Prince Ahmed bin Abdulaziz Al Saud on charges of treason. These moves were seen as potentially paving the way for Mohammed bin Salman's succession to the throne. Mohammed bin Nayef's implication in corruption through a secret 2007 decree signed by King Abdullah further complicates the situation, suggesting broader power struggles beyond financial issues. In November 2020, the sentencing of Saad al-Jabri's son and daughter for money laundering and attempting to escape from Saudi Arabia was viewed as an effort to pressure al-Jabri to return to the kingdom. Similarly, the death sentence handed down to Fahd bin Turki bin Abdulaziz, a former top commander of Saudi forces in Yemen, could be a means to pressure his family to return assets. Mohammed bin Salman has implemented reforms, such as banning ministers from serving on company boards to address corruption. Concerns about conspicuous consumption by Mohammed bin Salman, including ownership of luxury items like yachts and a chateau in France, could leave him politically vulnerable, especially during economic downturns. His political consolidation efforts, while aiming to centralize governance, may also limit avenues for expressing dissatisfaction, potentially creating internal enemies. Despite these challenges, systemic threats like succession after King Salman, economic and political expectations following liberalization, and external threats remain. Mohammed bin Salman's neutralization of opposition, facilitated by events like the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi, the Yemen conflict and the Qatar crisis, has helped consolidate his power domestically. Saudi Arabia's economy is quintessentially a rentier economy, heavily reliant on oil exports and possessing vast reserves. King Salman's ascension to the throne in 2015 was marked by significant spending to alleviate socio-economic pressures reflecting the kingdom's dependence on oil revenues to manage domestic affairs. Efforts to diversify the economy away from reliance on oil revenues have been ongoing since the early 1970s, with initiatives like the Saudi Development Bank and investments in infrastructure projects. However, structural challenges persist, including hypercentralization, bureaucratic obstacles, and overlapping jurisdictions which pose threats to the success of Vision 2030, a key initiative aimed at economic transformation. The COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated these challenges, impacting sectors like oil, trade, tourism, and productivity. The uncertainty surrounding mega-projects, corporate scandals, and management issues further complicates economic diversification efforts. Moreover, geopolitical factors such as tensions with Iran Reputation damage from events like the Ritz-Carlton episode and the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi and the Yemen conflict contribute to economic uncertainties. Additionally, the transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources poses long-term challenges for the kingdom's oil-dependent economy. Despite these challenges, Saudi Arabia has sought opportunities for economic growth, such as agreements like the one with Kuwait for the development of the Dora gas field, potentially signaling cooperation in energy projects amid changing global dynamics. 
However, the kingdom faces the imperative of adapting to evolving economic realities while navigating geopolitical complexities and internal structural reforms to achieve sustainable economic diversification. Demographic challenges in Saudi Arabia present significant complexities for the political economy of the country. With a population of 28 million, where 70% are below the age of 30, the pressure for socio-economic development is substantial and increasing. Despite efforts to create jobs, including growth in the private sector, youth unemployment remains high, particularly among Saudis in their early 20s. Factors such as skills mismatch, job expectations and perceptions about welfare state entitlements contribute to this phenomenon. Women's participation in the workforce, although historically low, has been increasing, reaching 33% in 2022. Rising education levels among Saudi women suggest the potential for higher employment rates in the future, although traditional gender roles still persist. The introduction of initiatives like Saudi Sation aims to reduce reliance on expatriate labor and create more job opportunities for Saudis. Attracting foreign investment is a key component of Saudi Arabia's economic diversification strategy. Efforts to create investor-friendly policies, establish economic zones, and encourage regional headquarters of multinational companies in Riyadh are part of this agenda. Additionally, programs like Sharik involve collaboration between Saudi firms such as Aramco and Sabic to fund domestic capital spending and boost GDP growth. Despite these efforts, challenges remain, including the need to increase foreign direct investment, navigate changes in global economic dynamics, and address regulatory barriers. Changes to laws, such as restrictions on data transfer outside the kingdom, may impact FDI inflows. Overall, managing demographic shifts and fostering sustainable economic growth are critical priorities for Saudi Arabia's political economy the Saudi Arabian Monetary Agency, SAMA, now known as the Saudi Central Bank, has played a crucial role in managing the kingdom's oil surpluses and supporting the national budget since its establishment in 1952. SAMA adopts a cautious investment approach, primarily focusing on fixed income investments like U.S. Treasury bonds. In contrast, the Public Investment Fund, PIF, established in 1971, operates as a sovereign wealth fund and actively invests in large-scale projects to drive economic growth and diversification, particularly as part of Vision 2030. One of the PIF's flagship projects is the futuristic city of Neom, situated in the northwest corner of Saudi Arabia. With an expected investment of $500 billion, Neom aims to capitalize on the kingdom's strategic location to link Africa, Asia, and Europe. The project includes ambitious plans for infrastructure development, such as a new causeway to Egypt and a 170 km line city stretching from the Red Sea to the mountains and into the desert. These initiatives seek to position Saudi Arabia as a global hub for trade, tourism and innovation. However, challenges remain regarding the feasibility and sustainability of these projects, particularly amidst the COVID-19 era and market volatility. Questions arise about the PF's ability to double its assets and reach $1.07 trillion by 2026, as well as its long-term goal of managing $2 trillion by 2030. Additionally, concerns persist about whether these economic diversification efforts will effectively transition Saudi Arabia away from its reliance on oil revenues and towards a post-rentier economy. The interplay between Saudi Arabia's economic diversification efforts and its foreign policy priorities is a crucial consideration. Sustainable economic development may influence the kingdom's diplomatic engagements and partnerships, impacting regional dynamics and global geopolitics. As Saudi Arabia navigates these challenges, the success of its economic diversification initiatives will shape its political stability and influence on the international stage. Saudi Arabia's national security challenges, particularly in relation to its monarchical interests, 
It highlights the historical and ongoing intertwining of political consolidation with the ruling elite's interests, leading to difficulties in distinguishing between state interests and those of the monarchy. The main contemporary security concerns mentioned include the rise of violent Islamist groups, such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS, as well as the threat posed by the Houthis in Yemen and Iran's perceived challenge to the US-imposed regional order. Historically, Saudi Arabia has supported various factions aligned with its interests, such as royalist Yemenis against Nasser's Egypt in the 1960s, and financing Mujahideen operations in Afghanistan in the 1980s. While the kingdom has traditionally engaged in proxy wars and deployed soft power through funding Wahhabi doctrine abroad, there is a shift towards building a more technologically advanced military. This includes investments in drones and special forces, signaling a move away from conventional warfare concerns with Iraq and Iran. Additionally, the text outlines Saudi Arabia's military engagements and defense acquisitions, including its involvement in conflicts such as the Gulf War and its partnerships with the US for defense support. It also mentions Saudi Arabia's initiatives in hosting military coalitions and exercises to combat terrorism. In terms of military capabilities, Saudi Arabia's armed forces are described as dominant in the southern Gulf region and well-equipped with significant numbers of troops, tanks, aircraft and missile defense systems. Significant challenges in achieving operational command objectives within the Saudi Ministry of Defense. These include the exclusion of the Saudi Arabian National Guard, Sangu, due to its tribal base, the establishment of the Presidency of State Security under Mohammed bin Salman to reduce reliance on the Ministry of Interior, and the dominant influence of the Ministry of Interior within the Kingdom's security apparatus. Furthermore, there are structural issues, such as General Fahad bin Turki, Chief of the Joint Operational Command, reporting directly to Defense Minister Mohammed bin Salman, instead of the Saudi Chief of Staff, General Fayyad al-Ruwaili. Additionally, the National Risk Unit is not equipped to address terrorism and cyber attacks in the same comprehensive manner as its UK counterpart, the National Security Council. In response to potential nuclear threats from Iran, Saudi Arabia has indicated a desire to develop its own nuclear deterrent. However, challenges include a lack of human resources for nuclear weapons production and uncertainty regarding international agreements like the Section 123 Agreement with the US, particularly in light of Saudi Arabia's expanding civil nuclear program.